Hello everybody, it's me, your favorite Draft Factory, and I'm back with some more Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and this is a new series I'm going to be doing with... Marsh! And we are going to be playing through the off... or offline... the online uh, story mode in the Gathering Hall. The one where you can go online and meet random people or play with friends that you have. You can also play locally with friends, that's actually what we're doing. And uh, you may notice that Marsh has a different colored name than uh, my name. That's because she's actually already high rank in this mode, but we are going to be using uh, rank appropriate gear. Uh, so we're going to start in one star here, and that's Hunter rank one. And we have um, sets and weapons that are only available in that rank. Uh, so I've got the Bold Barbarian Axe and the Jaggy set. And I've jammed the Jaggy set to have Negate Stun and Speed Sharpening. Comes with Have Stun and Speed Sharpening. Not the world's greatest set, but it's a good place to start. It's a it's a defense increase from the Daring set that you start with, and uh, it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good. The uh, Speed Sharpening does actually add a lot to the set, and then Negate Stun means that if you get comboed by monsters, you won't have to deal with uh, standing around dizzied. And Marsh. I am wearing the Viper Bite, which gives you some paralysis damage, sword and shield. That comes from the Gendro, which you can actually meet in Hunter Rank 1. It can show up in one of the gathering quests. The Sunken Hollow. There you go. And the Velociprey outfit, which you can get from expeditions that you can do as guild quests once you get into the online mode. Correct? Correct. <laughs> and... Uh, the Voss Spray comes with Attack Up Small and Have Stun. And she's gemmed in Speed Sharpening, and her, <clears throat> and her charm gives her Spirit's Whim, which is pretty good because you're going to want to be gathering a lot this early in the game. But these are two really good starting sets for Blades. Um, as a side note, for... The, uh, for gunners and bow users, <clears throat> sorry, throat's all scratchy. Uh, <clears throat> the daring set is probably going to carry you through a lot of the low rank stuff. Um, honestly, you can make pretty much any set you want as long as you get a de the uh, defense increase because the uh, the low rank sets are just not very friendly to ranged users, and the ranged weapons are pretty low quality, so. Just work with what you got. Um, it's a little bit slower to use ranged in the early game than it is later in the game. So just stick with it if you are dedicated to using range. Uh, I recommend Tetsu Cabra, which is a pretty decent set. But let's move on to uh, how the early game actually works here. In, in the guild hall, you need to use... Uh, you need to use the different quests to actually make more ranks available. So you need to perform only a certain number of quests, but you're allowed to perform whatever ones you want. You just need to perform certain ones called key quests. And in one star, there are four key quests. And the first one is Bug Burger. The second one is Ketcha Conundrum. Third is tackling a Tetsu Cabra, and fourth is the Gypsaros project. And once you do all four of those, you unlock an urgent quest, which is kind of like a gateway for you to get to your next rank. So we're going to start with Bug Burger. So it's in the ancient step, so there's nothing to worry about in terms of Nothing to worry about in terms of uh, hot and cold drinks and stuff. That stuff doesn't come in until the next rank. Don't worry about it. And, oh, yeah, you have got a lot of upgrades. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, your friends, if they have canteen up upgrades, they share them with you. So whoever has the highest canteen upgrade actually shares their upgrades with the whole party. But you eat at this table to get your food buffs and everything. And uh, you get to take along your main palico if you're only playing with two people, like we are. And if you don't, uh, if you want to join the other person's quest, you come talk to the quest board, and it's posted up there. Just tap A a bunch, you'll get it. Don't worry. You want to talk about the gong for a minute? 
explain how that works? The gong is, uh, well, when you're offline, the gong changes your hunters for higher quests. Uh, it's, there's, there is a help section in the game, so you can read that. But um, online, with the gong, you can change the rules of the room. So once you're in a room, uh, if you like become the leader or something and you want to change what you're fighting uh, as it shows up to people searching for rooms, you can talk to the gong lady if you're the leader. And you can change all of the options on the bottom screen here. And you can change like what the location is if you have uh, another location, like G rank play. And uh, you can change the hunter type to whatever... You can change it from anything that you have in lower. You can change it, change it to anything that you have in lower. So I can change it to low and noob and any. <laughs> quest type is uh, the, the various quest types, including guild quests. And all of these things are mostly search parameters so that people know what kind of, kind of what you're doing in the room. Target can change your... Uh, your monsters, or if you're gathering ores or transporting eggs, that kind of stuff. Message is kind of just for fun. Um, sometimes you can indicate what you're doing by saying event quest players. That lets people know that you're doing the event quest version of that monster. And passcode, you can set a passcode by saying yes and like you hit confirm. And you can put in a passcode like 8852. And now anybody who tries to join my room knows that we are doing whatever I set those things to. So now we're playing event quests and our, we have a password on our room. And nobody without the password can join. So that's, that's a little rundown of the gong. All right, let's go kill this thing. What are we hunting? <laughs> a Celtus. Celtus, okay, cool. Playing around with other parts of the guild hall is a great way to forget what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> Lots of people get confused on how to use the gong, though, the first time, so... So, in low-rank quests, just like in the low-rank story mode, you are gonna start in the camp, but you're gonna have a lot more supplies, because this mode is actually balanced around playing with four people in the room. But we've only got two people, so we could kinda chow down on all the supplies if we wanted to. I don't think we're gonna need to, though. It's a great way to farm hot drinks later, though. Yes, it is. Yeah, you can actually uh, you can actually profit on hot drinks if you go on quests with uh, with hot drinks in the box. <laughs> Giraffe and I used to do two-man runs all the time in the previous games. Mm -hmm. So we had endless hot drinks. That's right. All right, let's go find this Celtus. I think this particular quest, he starts in the uh, center. The one with the bridge? Yeah, four. I think you're right. Yeah, there he is. Hey, buddy. Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Hey, where are you going? Don't you run away from me. <laughs> what? Why didn't I jump off the ledge? What was that? Video games. <laughs> oh, I just fell off of it. <laughs> Trying to throw a ping pong there. Oh, what? I'm not reaching it? Are you serious? What? What's happening? <laughs> this is a terrible map to fight Celtus on. The angle of the ground makes it very weird. Because he's floating like just above the ground. It makes it really tough to actually get at him. Gotcha. I was trying to attack him on the way down, but I couldn't do it. Aww. So in online mode, you can uh, you can kind of push and throw your other hunter friends, and sometimes it can be funny if you're playing with friends. But a lot of the time, people are gonna get really mad at you if you do uh, if you do stuff like that um, in the online mode with random other players. It's not so bad anymore because you can help people mount by throwing them. If you throw them upwards, yeah. yeah. But if you like. If you push someone across the ground, then it's uh, it's pretty frustrating either way. Oh, time to make use of my speed sharpener. Oh, me too. Oh. 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 <laughs> 
Jeez, calm down, Celtus. Dang it, I'm not even hitting it. Oh, come on. <laughs> We are elegant players, in case you can't tell. Such good. Such good, wow. What? What? We can't stagger him. We can't do enough damage to stagger him. <laughs> I fell out of the zone. <laughs> <laughs> He's standing in, like, just the worst spot. Yeah, this is, like, actually the worst place to fight this monster, in my opinion. Gotcha. My bad. Get down. <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> no! Oh, he's almost dead. Ah, uh, just let him run. Okay. Celtus has very little health. Oh, we're not. I was standing on the edge of the zone, and I think I got pushed in. Yeah, when he flies, he does a little attack around him. Gotcha. Gotcha, he said. <laughs> Oh, the other side disappeared. I'm gonna go mining. <laughs> Alright, and I still want to play. Blah. I love the name of this quest, Bug Burger. Bug Burger. Because Delicious. I do like to imagine that they make burgers out of him. Yes. I bet it would be delicious. Probably. Insects are full of protein. Aww. Didn't, didn't didn't get him out. Uh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was pretty awesome. <laughs> Did get a death. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, well that's the uh, first key quest there. Um, like I said, there's four key quests. We're gonna go ahead and do another one here because we got plenty of time. Yeah. But the key quests are just the quests you need to do to progress. Um, you can do all the other quests, and they will help you get materials and stuff. Like, for instance, there's no Jaggy on the key quest list, but I have. But I am wearing Jaggy armor and using Jaggy weapons. Um, it's possible to fight Jaggies this early, especially offline. It's very easy. Um, but it's just. It's just that the uh, key quests are what you need to do to progress through your hunter ranks. This sword also has this uh, switch axe in the sword mode has poison vial actually. It's just that I wasn't hitting him enough with the sword mode to actually get the poison in him. I saw a puff of poison and I was wondering who did that. Yeah. That was me. Also, key quests count for everyone that goes on it. Even if you're not the right rank for it. Um, so there's there's requirements for joining quests a lot of the time, but uh, usually normal quests, like including keys, um, throughout the game in the in the right uh, ranked group. So low, high, or G. Usually you only have to be low, high, or G for that section's quests. For instance, Marsh could actually post a Hunter rank 2 or 3 key quest, and when I get to that rank, if we do that and win it, then when I get there, I don't have to do that quest anymore. It's already done. Urgents, on the other hand, are a different matter. For an urgent quest, the person who posts it gets to progress not everybody who goes on it. So the person who posts it is able to go forward um, go forward into their next rank by beating that quest or having their friends help them beat that quest. So if you've got four friends in a room and you all have the same urgent, you're gonna have to do it four times. That's right. All right, so up next is Catch a Conundrum. And we got to go find and murder a Catch a Watcher. 
free stuff again. Always take the free stuff. Free stuff's very helpful. I'm gonna take the Sonic Bomb. No worry. Free map. <laughs> You know, I never noticed until just now. There's actually a, like a little zip line in that map. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be if you could jump on that zip line and get out of the room like really fast? You might be able to. I've never tried. <laughs> I don't remember where he is. I don't think there's any such thing in this game. There aren't shortcuts in this one. Well, there's, there's no such thing as jumping on a zip line. Like there's no there's no animations like that in the game. There's no shortcuts on this map either. That I know of. There's only one shortcut that I know of, and it's in the Primal Forest. I played the other games for so long not knowing they were, there were shortcuts and just always being baffled as to how Giraffe got to the zone so much faster than me. Because <laughs> I wasn't watching his arrows. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> it always goes to two, even if it knows you're here. It's so weird. He's like, uh, I've got a meeting, thank you. I've got to go. I've got to go converse with the leaves. <laughs> oh, come on. So Ketchawacha, if he's hanging from the, um... Uh, uh, oh, little trapperoni from Factory, nice. So I set Factory's uh, first stringers um, to some healing and support, and now he heals better, and he also sometimes lays down traps, which is pretty cool. Alright, he's not coming out from under there unless he's on the ground, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Dang it, Miss Aroni. Uh, the... When, when the Ketcha is hanging on the netting, you can knock him down as long as he's not mad with a sonic bomb. Because he's got big sensitive ears. Jump in my trap, would you? Thank you. Oh, wow, I didn't think he was going to get in it. He's not the smartest. <laughs> I'm sorry if I throw you. You didn't. Awesome. The trap was just laid in such an interesting spot. I thought he was going to go to the ledge above it. Blah. Time to sharpen. Shock. Oh, that's speed sharpening. Speed sharpening is such a great skill. Yes. Mount. So, when mounting online, um, uh, there's a couple of things to note. If a monster roars, and you could stab through the roar to finish the mount, don't, because not, I'm sure not everybody in the room has high-grade earplugs, unless that's your plan. Um, what? How do I keep going through him when I try to do that? Um, because those people are going to have to, you know, unless, unless it means failing the mount, of course. If you're going to fail the mount, unless you stab through the roar then go for it. But um, if you can hold off a couple of seconds and wait for the roar to be done, then you actually add a lot more... Oh, do you have the other Sonic Bomb? Yes. You can actually um, add more damage to the monster when he falls down by making sure that the... Uh, making sure that the other hunters in the group are able to go fight it, because if the, if the monster roars and then falls down, everybody still has to, like, reel from the roar, right? So they don't have a chance to attack the monster, and so you kind of ruin the mouth in a certain way. So trying not to... Make, trying to make sure that your friends aren't incapacitated during the during the roar is, uh, or during the mount is pretty good. And then an important part about mounting is don't attack a monster while someone else is mounting. This is probably the most important thing about mounting. If you see someone else mounting, don't attack. And if everybody is standing around doing nothing in the room, 
and you're like, what's going on? I'm just going to go attack the monster. Double check that there's not somebody on top of them. <laughs> because usually when a bunch of people aren't attacking a monster, it's for a reason. Whoa. Get away from me. Dang it, man. He's warmed up. He might be ready to to uh, mount. Oh, I thought that was one. Oh, he's gonna run. Not if I mount him first. It's so much fun watching other people mount the monster. Because everything just stops for a minute. Yeah. Everybody gets to take a little break, heal up, sharpen. Use the time effectively. Yeah, it's a great time to, <clears throat> to pop an item of pretty much any variety. As long as you can get it off. And, like, it's also a really cool time to... It's also a really cool time to get, like, a health horn out. If you're playing in a four-person group, and especially if the person is person who's mounting is low health, uh, it's a very good time to do something like uh, play a health horn or eat a life powder. Free Bonahabra, I'll take it. Always take free Bonahabras. Bonahabra are just so annoying to farm. It's worth it. <laughs> Walk into the zone, he just slaps me. Like, get down, son. Come here. Got him. Got him. Oh, I skipped the cutscene. <laughs> oh well. Have it. Have it. <laughs> it right. comes important unless you're really good at the weird angles you gotta move at when it's for things like the Darren Moran and stuff like that. Yeah, on bigger monsters, it's important to skip the cutscene so that you know how to line up your carves and everything. Monsters with many more carves, or if a monster has a tail that's like across the map, you're gonna want to skip the cutscene to go get everything you deserve. Yep. So one thing I did, I do kind of want to point out, this Viper Bite that I'm wearing has 100 paralysis on it, which you might think isn't that high. But I still paralyzed that monster. The thing with Sword and Shield is that you have to keep attacking a lot in order to get your status to work. Yeah, low status numbers aren't bad. You just need to stay aggressive to get them to really work. And it depends on the resistance of the monster as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, early in the game like this, just one paralysis is really good. I mean, they don't have very much health in this part of the game. So it's really, honestly, it is worth it to just get one paralysis out of the monster. Get the combo pretty hard when that happens. And that was only one paralysis weapon. Yeah. If you have two paralysis weapons, you'll probably get two paras out of out of a quest. So, pretty good. Well, I think it's uh, going to be it for today's episode. Um, we've got a couple more quests in Hunter Rank 1 here for next time. But until then, I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you there. Bye. Bye, everybody.